Hey, this is Willie from Fungi Ally. Today we're going to take a look at a commercial mushroom farm. This is Mycoterra in Deerfield, Massachusetts. They grow about 1,200 pounds of mushrooms a week of shiitakes, oysters, lion's mane, piopino, chestnut, all sorts of things. Let's take a look at their process. Hey, Julia. Hey, Willie. Thanks for having us here today. Sure. Um, so you want to start walking us through the process of how you grow mushrooms here? Sure. Um, well, we this is the foundation of all of the varieties we grow. Um, there's a, a number of different growth modes for a variety of mushrooms. We focus on primary decomposers, mushrooms that uh, decompose fresh hardwood sawdust. Uh -huh. So we source hardwood sawdust from a few different mills in Massachusetts, Vermont, and Connecticut. Yep. And there's our pile. That's uh, uh, We always like to have a nice stack on hand for uh, feeding our mushrooms. Sweet. So this yeah. is the base of what they are eating. That is the primary substrate. And yep. then uh, in addition to the sawdust, we supplement it, uh, the substrate, with various organic grains. And mm -hmm. we do that inside. For our uh, fruiting blocks, we supplement the sawdust with uh, a variety of agricultural byproducts, wheat bran, uh, hulls of oat and soy, uh, all our different substrate supplements that we use for our fruiting blocks. Um, different species have different preferences and we uh, mix up a variety of uh, substrate formulas to feed our mycelium and make good mushrooms. This is our batch mixer. It's a two cubic yard ribbon blender and uh, this is uh, we load our sawdust in here and our uh, various substrates. A little bit of gypsum to add minerals and buffer acidity. Uh, we mix it to a good homogenous blend and then um, we uh, pipe water in from the greenhouses to get the moisture content adjusted around 55-60%. And um, once it's well blended, then uh, we progress to the bagging stage of the process. Do you measure your moisture content at all or do you we just use, go by feel? We use a moisture meter. I don't trust it. Um, I actually trust my feel. Um, we have basically a three uh, stage three checks that I like to follow. Um, first is the squeeze test. You want the sawdust to be um, moist but not wet. You want it to uh, dampen your hand pretty well but you don't want to be able to squeeze any loose mixture out of it. Um, we use the moisture meter and uh, but that can be the results can be really variable depending on who's using it and how they're using it. Um, the final check uh, goes back to um, my startup days where I was sterilizing material in uh, small all-American sterilizers. Um, and there I really got to know moisture content by doing oven dried samples to really determine what my moisture levels were. And there I, did, I figured out uh, the bags I use fold over with about one and a half fingers extra space and weigh five pounds on filling when they're at that perfect moisture content. And that is my favorite check. It's, cool. it's really pretty consistent as far as nailing down the moisture. So if all three of those check out, then uh, we, we, we feel like we're pretty good to go. So the, the substrate just falls right out of the uh, mixer into this hopper yep. and it conveys up and you hold the bag down here. Yep. Just fills the bags. When you, um, uh, pull your bag up, you, you, uh, there's just a little finger trigger that you uh, hit when you fill the bag. It, ex it advances the conveyor and there's a timer that um, uh, regulates how fast the conveyor advances and how much uh, substrate it dumps into the bag. Great. So, Better than the lemonade scoop? It's a lot better. <laughs> we can do a few hundred bags in an hour. So once everything's all bagged up, then what do we got? So after it's all bagged up, we uh, load the material into our autoclave here. Um, it's pretty massive. It was a big step up for us, and that's what um, this actual facility is kind of all built around. Uh, back at our old location, we were sterilizing eight bags 
in uh, 10 all American pressure cookers. So we were sterilizing 80 bags at a time, two times a day. Um, now in this autoclave, autoclave gives us a capacity of 1,200 bags in a cook. And so um, after the bags are filled, they get folded, loaded onto some custom welded racks and pushed up into the autoclave. Uh, these spider doors seal it down and it's effectively a large uh, pressure cooker uh, that will give us um, the capacity of sterilizing at 20 PSI. It takes about an hour um, once we uh, close up the doors and turn on the uh, boiler, which is in that room over there. It's a 35 horsepower, 1.6 million BTU propane powered steam boiler. And that makes more than enough steam to achieve the sterilization that we need in the autoclave. That's basically the heart of the operation. There's steam from the boiler piped into the autoclave and it uh, takes about an hour to get to pressure and then we cook for about four hours at 20 PSI to uh, basically level the playing field and give the uh, mushrooms that we're going to inoculate that sawdust with a competitive advantage against all the other organisms that would love to thrive on our substrate. This is our cool down room. After sterilizing our sawdust for four hours at 20 PSI, we turn off the boiler and let the material um, cool somewhat in the autoclave overnight. It gives it a slow controlled cool down and then uh, in the morning around eight o'clock my crew gets in, we open up this door and roll all of the material we uh, just sterilized out in this room. And this room is insulated from the rest of the lab, so the hot material coming out of the autoclave um, isn't uh, adding to any heat stress in the rest of the incubation area. This was manufactured in 1968. They don't really make them anymore. The, the, these autoclaves were used widely in canning, mainly the canning part of the food processing industry, although for other applications as well. This one actually came from a potato chip factory in North Carolina. I don't know exactly how they used it in potato chip manufacturing, but um, uh, that's where it came from. And then we had to do, uh, which is visible on the other side, but a lot of uh, custom welding to tweak it for our specific application um, and it's made out of heavy steel so uh, even though it was made in 68 it's got a lot of life left to it it'll probably outlive the rest of the building we are in the uh, incubation area but I have some of the material that we use for um, creating our own spawn we maintain a culture library in-house and um, uh, the cultures are stored in test tubes in refrigeration. Uh, we uh, propagate the mycelium from our stored test tubes uh, using a vegetative culture technique where we propagate just a little wedge of the myceliated agar on our storage test tubes onto agar filled uh, petri dishes. The agar is supplemented with a uh, uh, formula that fa favors uh, the mushroom growth that we're trying to, the, sorry, the agar is uh, formulated with supplements that favor the species we're trying to grow. And so the mycelium grows uh, when placed on the petri dish in a pretty concentric colony and each species of mycelium has its own characteristics. Once our dishes are colonized they're with a nice round colony, they're, re they're ready to uh, scale up to the next step. From petri dishes, we uh, scale them up to uh, what we call mini bags. They're actually the uh, unicorn uh, 4T bag and uh, we just put a couple wedges of the mycelium into millet that has been um, uh, had water added and sterilized in the autoclave. The mycelium grows from the agar wedge through the millet 
and uh, once the millet becomes fully colonized in our mini bags we uh, use about one mini bag to inoculate four larger grain bags. Uh, we take that intermediate step to give the agar a reasonable amount of material to colonize and um, uh, basically uh, control our losses and be able to isolate any contaminants that happen in that first transfer uh, from the mini bag to the larger grain bag just about it's broken up and a quarter of the material is poured into each of four bags the bags are sealed and they incubate for a couple weeks depending on the strain um, sometimes longer sometimes not quite so long um, a note on the bags is these are an autoclavable polypropylene bag that are outfitted with a synthetic filter patch that filters out uh, anything down to 0.2 microns that allows the mycelium to breathe as it grows. The mycelium breathes oxygen and respires car carbon dioxide. So this allows it to breathe and keeps out contaminants. Then these uh, larger grain bags we use to um, either inoculate end fruiting material or as in the case of shiitake, we actually scale this up one more time to unsupplemented sawdust that we've sterilized and that sawdust is used as the spawn for the end fruiting material that's that's the material that is supplemented with the grains so uh, when we unload the material from the autoclave first it cools down in the cool down room once the temperatures dropped low enough to inoculate we bring it out and place it the our blocks in front of the laminar flow hood uh, the laminar flow hood uh, is basically a blower pushing uh, air through HEPA filters that then uh, that filter out all particulates down to 0.2 microns with a uh, high level of effectivity. So it's giving us a clean airflow to inoculate in front of. And again, after all that trouble of sterilizing the material, uh, it, the clean airflow is giving a, the species we're trying to grow a competitive advantage over anything that could be introduced during the inoculation process. Uh, the bags are opened up in front of the laminar flow hoods and then inoculated either using the millet in the case of uh, our oyster mushrooms and other exotics or with our sawdust spawn um, in the case of shiitake. And so in front of those laminar flow hoods, we typically open up 30 bags and then um, uh, use a couple units of spawn uh, poured in over the bags. Um, we take a lot of care not to um, uh, move our hands or bodies over the bags and uh, a lot of care not to have any contact. We want our transfer to be as clean as possible. Uh, once the bags have been uh, inoculated with either the soda spawn or the millet, then um, the bags are sealed in our bag sealer. We shake them and then uh, they get labeled and placed on shelves to incubate uh, in a relatively controlled environment. Uh, the mycelium grows from the millet through the sawdust and over time uh, transforms the sawdust and supplements into a living fungal organism. Uh, you can see these were done pretty recently in the last week and uh, the growth progresses pretty rapidly. Here's some other varieties of bags. This is the shiitake. Uh, the mycelium essentially grows through, digests the sawdust and creates a, a mass of cells and once it's a, accumulated a critical mass of nutrients uh, the blocks uh, appear very well colonized and they get moved out from the incubation area into the fruiting room.